Life aboard an old sailing ship was hard. You'd spend your day doing backbreaking labor, pumping, pulling ropes that shaved your hands, or reefing heavy sails in the rigging. One wrong step and you'd fall and snap your neck, all the while the ship's bosun yells at you to get back up. You'd likely get no more than four hours of sleep, unless if there was no wind, and then you could sleep as much as you want, for the ship could not move. The sun would burn you, and there would be absolutely nothing to do, possibly for weeks. Day in and day out, sailors' lives alternated between cycles of drudgery and boredom, all the while trapped on a wooden tub in the middle of the ocean. But during all those awful hours, if there was one thing that kept a sailor going, it was rum, 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 rum. Why is the rum always gone? Navy men or merchant sailors were issued the daily rum ration in a small cup. Many of them would save the rations for several days until they had enough to get rat face drunk on. This was naturally a problem due to all the dangers inherent to the working environment. A drunken sailor was never known for his balance and would often tumble overboard or fall from the rigging. And even if there were periods of doldrums, windlessness, the wind might come back at any second. Sailors always had to be ready to go from zero to a hundred. It was for this reason that Admiral Edward Vernon began to issue larger rations of rum diluted with water. One cup was far from enough to get you drunk, it was harder to save up, and you couldn't consume large enough quantities without pissing your pants. Since Vernon was nicknamed Old Grogram for wearing a clock of Grogram cloth, the drink soon earned its name Grog, and would become a mainstay in maritime culture. However, the invention of Grog happened in the 1730s, which was after the Golden Age of Piracy. Pirates would never have accepted that diluted navy piss as a proper drink. Popular culture says that alcohol was sacred to them, and no truer words were ever spoken. Sailors that turned to piracy expected themselves to be free from many of the harsh regulations in the navy. The bad pay, rules against swearing, and the damned rum rations. Some pirates saw themselves as Robin Hood's men, not because they stole from the rich and gave to the poor, but because they lived like the merrymen of Sherwood Forest, eating, swearing, and drinking whenever they wanted. For example, Bartholomew Roberts' code stated that Every man has equal title to the fresh provisions or strong liquors at any time seized, and may use them at pleasure. Rum was great as a sailor's drink because it's rather cheap to produce. It is made by fermenting molasses, which is a byproduct of refined sugar. It went by many names, such as Kill Devil, Rum Bullion, Barbados Water and Aquavite. The French nicknamed it Flibust, from the word filibuster. However, pirates didn't only drink rum. Rum didn't become a staple of an English sailor's ration until the 1660s, with the capture of Jamaica. Even then, rum was only consumed regionally in the Caribbean until the 1700s, when the Jamaican sugar industry flourished and allowed for British sailors to consume rum all around the world. Before this rum revolution, sailors really just drank whatever was the local produce. In the Caribbean it was rum, and in Europe it was brandy, which is made from distilling wine or pomace. Pomace are these solid remains of a pressed grape. Brandy was also the staple ration of Caribbean sailors until rum became prominent. In the Baltic, sailors drank liquor made from grain, potatoes, or even wood pulp. The favorite drink of the buccaneers in the 1600s was actually wine. Period accounts frequently describe the buccaneers' wine-related antics. Exquemelin said that his master would sometimes buy an entire pipe of wine, place it in the street, and force everyone that passed to drink from it at gunpoint. This wine was either imported from France or Spain, and was often mixed with lime to preserve better in the tropical climate. There was also local wines made from plantains, bananas and pineapples. Sailors wouldn't just drink strong alcohol, they also drank weak beer as a substitute for water. Water would spoil over long voyages and grow absolutely rancid and full of insects and plants. In Sweden they did an experiment where they stored water in a wooden barrel before taking it to a lab. After three months the water turned brown and broke the lab equipment when they tried testing it for contaminations. Pirates and other sailors preferred to mix their spirits into a drink, the most popular of which was bamboo, also known as rum punch. It was made from rum, sugar and lime juice. Pirates in Madagascar would actually use their merchant contacts in New York to import American limes for their rum punch. The lime would also have helped in combating scurvy. Aside from rum punch there was just punch, the favorite drink of the English. The word originates from the Hindustani word for five, since the drink typically had five ingredients. These ingredients included rum or brandy as a base, together with water, milk or cream. Then egg yolks, lemon or lime juice, spruced up with spices like nutmeg or clove, and the crust of a toasted bread. It was especially popular amongst the officers of a ship. A similar drink to punch was sangria, made with Madeira wine instead of rum. Flip was a dark drink with as many custom recipes that it had drinkers. It was typically made by having a strong beer mixed with sugar and rum and heated with a red hot iron to give it that distinctive burnt taste. 
You could also add eggs, cream and spices. English lemonade was made from sack wine, sugar, citrus juice, cinnamon, nutmeg, clove and a small amount of essence of amber. A similar drink was black strap, made from molasses, rum and chowder beer. Chowder beer was made from boiling spruce twigs in water, mixed with molasses and yeast and letting it ferment. There were also a few non-alcoholic drinks, if you're a teetotaler like yours truly or Captain Bart Roberts. He only drank tea, but he could enjoy a drink like beverage, made from spring water, white sugar and orange juice. Rum punch is not improperly called kill devil, for thousands lose their lives by its means. When newcomers use it to the least excess, they expose themselves to imminent peril, for it heats the blood and brings on fevers, which in very few hours send them to their grave. Charles Leslie might have exaggerated a bit in his description of rum, but the drink has certainly brought many evils, even if indirectly. According to legend, the buccaneer Rock Brasiliano would get drunk and roam the streets of Port Royal, beating and wounding anyone he came across. The pirates Levasseur, Cochlin and Davis allegedly ended their powerful alliance after a drunken argument. I'm sure you've got some personal anecdotes of your own regarding drunken tomfoolery. Feel free to share them in the comment section. In comparison to navy and merchant vessels, discipline was more lax aboard sea rover ships. Sometimes they were so drunk that they had to sail into open waters to avoid running aground. Other times they were too drunk to attack a ship and had to sober up before attempting it. Stealing was also the most common way for pirates to acquire alcohol. Morgan's buccaneers looted vast quantities of wine from the towns they sacked. The Spanish sometimes poisoned it. Henry Jennings once broke his rule of never attacking English ships because his company had run out of rum. Boost made up one of the largest quantities of goods stolen by pirates. Alcohol became the bane and end of many a pirate. Jack Rackham is incorrectly remembered for designing this a historical flag, but the only flag he has ever been recorded as flying was the white flag of surrender. Whoops. In this incident, he and his lads were pissed drunk when the navy attacked them. Only the two women aboard, Anne Bonny and Mary Reed, were able to put up a fight. To avoid incidents like this, some pirate codes would punish drunkenness during battle, but this was hard to avoid when they were the hunted. At their very end, many a pirate would blame their sins on the evils of alcohol. Shortly before being hanged, the pirate William White made the following in confession. But my drunkenness has had a great hand in bringing ruin upon me. I was drunk when I was enticed aboard the pirate. Likewise did his comrade, John Rose Archer, say that But one wickedness has led me as much as any to all the rest has been my brutish drunkenness. By strong drink I have been heated and ardent into the crimes that are now more bitter than death unto me. I had to give kudos to my mom for showing me that Swedish video with the dirty water. I won't say more than that however, pirate has to keep hidden from the navy after all. I'll leave a link to the video in the description however. Now we'll take a look at a comment from last week. Clever Mac generic name asked which is the best pirate video game. Rad Raider 88 gives his point to Assassin's Creed 4 but I'm a Sid Meier's pirates enjoyer myself. That game is 17 years old now, but I still play it today. If you have a favorite pirate video game, you can share it with us in the comments. Cheers. The Golden Gunpowder YouTube Channel.